film sets are majorly complex operations in which hundreds, even thousands of people come together in an attempt to get actors in front of a camera lens and capturing compelling images. A lot can go wrong during shooting, but there's little worse than a camera getting broken. I'm Ewan, this is What Culture, and here are 10 movie scenes that broke the camera. Number 10, Catwoman Rides the Bat Pod, The Dark Knight Rises. And so begins our chronicle of Christopher Nolan's historic abuse of those incredibly expensive IMAX cameras he so lovingly advocated for throughout his career. For the gonzo climax of 2012's The Dark Knight Rises, Anne Hathaway's stunt double filmed a shot where she rides the bat pod out of the courthouse and down the steps, seemingly after killing Bane. No, Bane! And yet, the stunt double ended up crashing head-on into a bulky IMAX camera, sending it hurtling out of the operator's hands and smashing to the floor. Unlike most of the other entries on this list, there's even video footage of the accident in question, though as it confirms, there were thankfully no injuries sustained as a result. All the same, given that IMAX cameras cost around $500,000 each, and there are just a handful of them in circulation at any one time, that's quite the expensive mistake to make, regardless of whose feet you like the blame at. To make it even worse, this shot doesn't even appear in the final film as after Catwoman kills Bane, we don't see her drive down the courthouse steps at all. Number 9. Abigail Fires an Arrow Blade Trinity Late in the third Blade movie, which you all forgot existed, Abigail Whistler, played by Jessica Biel, puts her god tier archery skills to good use, firing a barrage of arrows at her foes, including the ultimate antagonist Drake, played by Dominic Purcell. While filming the sequence though, Beale, who had trained extensively in archery for the role, fired an arrow square into the camera's lens, the force causing the arrow to smash through the lens and embed itself roughly six inches into the camera body. According to filmmaker David S. Goya, this totaled the camera and cost the production around 300 grand in damages. Though, in a glorious behind the scenes video of the accident, both he and Beale seemed rather amused by it. Especially as she was just firing from around 40 feet away. Yeah, it's an expensive mistake to make for a shot lasting only around a second or so, but also such an impressively badass feat on Beale's behalf. It's kind of tough not to respect. It. Number 8. Alex Jumps Out a Window – A Clockwork Orange Nobody who's seen Stanley Kubrick's A Clockwork Orange will ever forget the iconic scene where protagonist Alex Delage, Malcolm McDowell, throws himself out of a window after ending up locked in a room with no escape from Beethoven's Ninth Symphony, as the brainwashing he's been subjected to makes him feel sick whenever he feels Beethoven. There's a distinctive first-person shot at the very end of the sequence, with a camera seemingly taking a tumble out of the window before Kubrick suddenly cuts to black. If you assume Kubrick came up with a clever pulley system to keep the camera safe, or perhaps even executed the shot in reverse, neither scenario is in fact true. As it turns out, Kubrick simply took the camera, encased it in a box, and had his crew throw it out a third-floor window of the hotel they were shooting in. Lens first. Getting the camera to land lens first was pretty tricky though, and it took six attempts for Kubrick to get the convincingly first person shot he wanted. And though the body of the camera itself miraculously survived such punishments, less surprisingly, the lens was totally obliterated by the successful shot, as it made direct, unprotected contact with the concrete floor. Number 7. Collins Ditches His Plane Dunkirk Ah, uh, Christopher Nolan, you strike again, this time with your Oscar-winning war film Dunkirk, which was shot entirely in IMAX. Nolan's aforementioned commitment to doing things practically ensured that, to achieve many of the gorgeous shots of planes soaring through the sky, Nolan literally had those heavy IMAX cameras mounted to aircraft. And this led to another accident during the sequence where Collins' plane is shot down over water and he's forced to ditch. We got some beautiful plane mounted shots of the Spitfire descending out of the sky towards the ocean, yet the outcome for the camera was a lot worse than it looks in the film itself. According to cinematographer Hoyt Van Hatima, the unmanned plane was launched from a platform into the ocean, with the IMAX camera being contained within a protective housing. While the initial plan was to simply retrieve the camera once the plane hit the 
the water, the plane ended up sinking almost immediately, taking the entire camera system with it. It was another 90 minutes before divers could retrieve the gear, by which point water pressure had broken the housing and flooded the camera with brackish water. But impressively, the actual film magazine containing the footage remained intact, and after being drained and cleaned with fresh water, was entirely usable. As Hoitima rightly pointed out, if the scene had been shot with a digital camera, the footage would have definitely been lost. Number 6. The Chocolate River Charlie and the Chocolate Factory From one liquid-related accident to another now, and we come to Tim Burton's cursed adaptation of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Though Burton wasn't doing anything nearly as ambitious as attaching an IMAX camera to a goddamn plane, he did nevertheless have a glossy chocolate river made for real, and then accidentally dunked a camera in it. While filming scenes inside Wonka's factory, a crew member failed to properly secure a camera to its wires support system, causing it to drop right in the chocolatey drink. The camera in question reportedly cost $540,000 and oh my god, that's so much money. But in total, the gaff ended up sending the production back an eye-watering $900,000. Oh, I'm dying. If you ever wondered why Burton has gone CGI overkill over the last 20 years, yeah, it's probably probably this that did that. All the same, the fact that there's probably raw footage somewhere of a camera tumbling into a giant vat of chocolate is undeniably amusing. If you happen to have that, please, please send it to me because I, I need that in my life. Number 5. Alexander's House Burns the Sacrifice. In the case of Andrei Tarkovsky's classic 1986 drama, The Sacrifice, it wasn't so much a calamitous accident which busted the camera as pure unfortunate happenstance. While shooting the iconic scene where Alexander, Erlen Josephson, burns his house down, which unfolds in a single, unbroken six-minute take, the camera suddenly jammed causing the footage to be ruined and left entirely unusable. And because a house was raised for real, the production had to spend two weeks rebuilding it at great cost for a reshoot. This time, Tarkovsky shot the sequence with two cameras running parallel to one another in order to account for any potential camera issues. This approach was suggested by cinematographer Sven Nikvies the first time they shot the scene, but was ill-advisedly vetoed by Tarkovsky. Completing the sequence was arduous enough for the casting and crew that many reportedly broke down in tears after it was successfully captured. And yet, I can totally see why. Number 4. The Tunnel Chase The Dark Knight The Dark Knight was the first major film to be shot with IMAX cameras, and in turn marked the first of Nolan's many trashings of the precious, precious equipment. While filming the tunnel sequence where the Joker, Heath Ledger, assails a SWAT convoy carrying Harvey Dent, Aaron Eckhart, one of the IMAX cameras covering the action was destroyed in a vehicular mishap. Details beyond this are relatively scarce, and some sources even claim the camera was actually destroyed in the scene's unforgettable truck flip climax. But given that all the in-film coverage of the truck flip is at a considerable distance, it doesn't seem terribly likely. Behind the scenes footage shows numerous cameras mounted on arms being raised to the tunnel at high speed, so it absolutely tracks that this is how the IMAX camera was obliterated into teeny tiny pieces. At the time The Dark Knight was being filmed, there were only four IMAX cameras in existence, and so this single calamity took out 25% of their capacity in one fell swoop. God damn it, Nolan, man, you're a monster! Number 3. The Family Harasses Marta Knives Out Away from the intensity of mega-resolution IMAX rigs now, we have the comparatively simple shooting setup of Ryan Johnson's brilliant murder mystery, Knives Out. The scene where Ana de Amas' Marta finds out that she's the sole inheritor of Harlan Thromby's fortune is punctuated by a memorable shot as she walks outside and is pursued by the entire clan. There's a noticeable transition from smooth study cam footage to shakier handheld, a seemingly intentional creative choice on Johnson's part to signify how suddenly destabilized and chaotic Marta's life has become. But as the Knives Out Twitter account so delightfully revealed a few years ago, the sudden shift to handheld was a total accident. Johnson was operating the camera himself during this take when the Steadicam rig suddenly broke, forcing him to take the camera handheld to prevent 
blowing the teg all in one. Ultimately, Johnson felt that the jarring motion as he discarded the Steadicam rig fit the scene perfectly, and he was absolutely right. Watching the scene without this knowledge, you'd never guess it was anything other than a totally deliberate, motivated stylistic flourish. And yet, the camera totally crapped out. Number two. The security hearing sex scene hallucination, Oppenheimer. Even though Christopher Nolan's most recent film was low on camera endangering stunts compared to his prior work, an IMAX camera still found a way to die during the shooting of Oppenheimer. In a recent panel interview, star Florence Pugh revealed that while she was filming the surreal sex scene with Killian Murphy as envisioned by Oppenheimer's wife Kitty during the security clearance hearing, the camera decided to go kaput. Awkward. In Pew's own words, quote, Our camera broke when we were both naked, and it was not ideal timing. Pew and Murphy were left huddled in a mostly naked clinch while camera technicians entered the closed set and fixed the issue. Hilariously, Pew admitted that she took advantage of the opportunity to learn something asking the camera tech what was wrong while still in a state of undress. While it's not remotely shocking that cameras get damaged and destroyed during high wire set pieces, during a tasteful sex scene, oh, that's a new one. And number one, the bridge of death, Monty Python, and the Holy Grail. It's somewhat fitting that a production as seat of the pants as Monty Python and the Holy Grail had major technical issues on its very first day. The Bridge of Death was the first sequence shot for the film, and on the very first take, the camera malfunctioned after being lugged up the treacherous Scottish shooting location of Glencoe. This marked a major problem as the low budget production could only afford a single camera, and though the crew were eventually able to get it working again, the camera wouldn't sync with sound recording equipment. And so, the crew were left shooting close-up shots without any dialogue while technicians figured out the sync issue, which they thankfully eventually did. It isn't known precisely what caused the camera to malfunction, all that foggy pace maybe? But it's rather ironic for a film that quite literally ends with the movie's own camera being broken.